Welcome to Princess Petals and Fairy Dust Florals. <sighs> like and subscribe below and share with your friends. Today we are going to be doing arrangements in uh, little teapots. We have a tea party that we are working on for a customer and I just happen to have these teapots and teacups. It's a whole tea set. This little tea set is probably over 15 years old. I got it from Burton and Burton. Um, it's fabulous. I acquired it uh, many years ago when I was working at one of the flower shops I was affiliated with. This is just an example of what I try and teach my students. Think outside of the box when doing centerpiece arrangements. Don't always stick to just the traditional arrangement in a utilitarian container. Do something that's unique experience for whoever is attending the event, but it's also a showpiece that can be a conversation point at each table. Um, and you don't always have to necessarily stick with the exact same centerpiece at each table. Do something different on each table. It definitely creates a topic of conversation, not just for the individual sitting at that one table, but also for out the entire event because people will say, hey, did you see that arrangement over at that table? That was really cool. And then people will congregate to that table and check out the different um arrangements that are at each table. Definitely, I encourage my students to, yeah, really think outside the box when you're doing table arrangements. It doesn't have to necessarily be the exact same thing. So, let's get started. A little trick of the trade I'm going to show you how to do when cutting uh, your Oasis foam. You can take your Oasis and line it up like this and just Give it a gentle press on the oasis. And there you have an indention of where you can cut. Eventually you'll get to the point you can just eyeball it and know where to cut and how big a space you need to open. Uh, but for my beginner classes, I always say, hey, do it like this, that way you're pretty precise. So you've got your indention of where to cut and I always have my students do kind of a, if you could see that, uh, start thin up here and go down thicker with your cutting so it's kind of like a wedge because you want this to slide down into your container very easily. The reason for making it wider up here on the top and smaller as we go down is because you want to have the most Oasis real estate to work with when doing your design. There we go. And that's a pretty snug fit, but I can tell you this is uh, too much Oasis to actually work with. So I'm going to just go in and slice that in half. And as you can see, I uh, do not have, this hasn't soaked well enough. Uh, this lighter color here is definitely where the uh, Oasis has not reached its full saturation capacity. So we will definitely want to soak this longer. And then I will, if I didn't have this uh, hole right here, I would need to form some kind of little hole to get water down in there so that my Oasis has a well of water to uh, be able to continuously soak water up with. So the little spout's great. Because I'm doing, I'm doing little miniature arrangements in all three of these, I am going to cut a small piece of Oasis to go in to these two containers also. And I already know I'm not gonna need a big piece for this, so again, I just measure it out. Normally I would have just gone and started hacking away, but since 
we are doing this is it educational tutorial I want everybody to do it as precise as possible with learning this and again once you've been in the industry you will just not even bother with measuring you will just go in and start hacking away and again I think that's a little high for my oasis I mean I know designers that will definitely leave it that high and use that I, I don't necessarily like to use the uh, have that much oasis oasis to um, out of my container for the reason that I have to somehow cover all this with either flowers or with green ring so again I'm just gonna go in and just slice that in half right off there and good thing I did because you see it's not even soaked up usually you want to think about when soaking your oasis to soak it for about 24 hours that way you know that it's fully saturated um, and I just got this out and put it in the water and it's probably been it soaking for a couple of hours now but um, that's some oasis this is just not uh, fast soaking so you definitely want to make sure your oasis is completely saturated before you start working with it then into my third little container and this one it would be hard to um, measure out so I have gone back in and soaked this. I've filled it up with water through here. I'm gonna make these two arrangements similar, so that's why I've got them a little side by side here. I am still thinking this is a lot of oasis to work with, so I'm even gonna go and skim that down even a little more. actually just barely above it the design I'm doing today is just really uh, more of an interpretive abstract designers choice And now I'm designing this as my definite front. I am putting a little on the back side um, because when you're doing a centerpiece arrangement, you want to have flowers that are all the way around, yeah. people sitting all around the table. And so you wanna make sure you've got flowers all the way around. And if you just look at this beautiful, stock we have very full blooms I love that and if you see the curvature of the bloom I'm gonna try and work with that as that's its natural curve but also if you look at the curvature of the teapot it's going in that natural curve also that way, this looks like a, you know, little lavender pillows that my tulips are sleeping on. When working with any floral stems, when you are designing in Oasis or straight into your vase, you don't want to work with shoving your stem into anything from up here. Oh, this one's a little shetty. You want to come down low and fish it in like this. So you're wondering why did she put that in curving up that way well if you see the shape of it is like this so it's coming in on itself 
and it's just the natural shape of the stock so it makes a really pretty line uh, looping back in on itself when these are coming up. Your uh, stock is creating different lines that your eye can follow first draping through here and through here and then curving back over into the arrangement. There's different uh, you know lines and styles that you can work with when doing an arrangement. Now because I don't want to leave any out of my little other little teapot here. Oops. I only have one bloom left. Well, I want to make the most of what I've got. So I'm going to snip this down here. Now I have two blooms that I can use. I'm going to stick this one inside this little container. And then this one is going to go inside this little teacup. And if you see, I chose to do it kind of in the arc in this one to kind of go with the same theme as the flow of this arrangement. Diagonal of that tulip and place it in there and you're like well why are you doing that is to cause some symmetry within the arrangement and then again I'm also doing that arc curve in on itself that crescent curve back and forth at this point I'm gonna remove uh, all of these so that it I can just show each individual one because I feel like it's probably getting a little cluttered up here for everybody to kind of follow. Although when I am designing, I actually do mine in assembly line. Uh, doesn't matter if I'm doing different shape containers. Uh, when it's for a single table centerpiece, I usually do everything all together. And now I'm placing this one kind of up here in the center because that is really going to be the focal for the arrangement. And then I'm going to put some through here. And now I'm placing some in the back of the arrangement. And you know, I have these little buds. I'm definitely going to use those just because it just adds more character and interest to the arrangement. And I totally believe you should use every single portion of your flower that you have. So if you see, I have all this color. It's great color through here. <coughs> I think I'm going to put one little one through there. But I'm using more of a little bud because, and then when you get to this point, you're like, okay, I'm running out of oasis space, but you just got to think about moving your blooms so you can sneak other little stems down in there. There, and I've got that low enough that it is not taken away from the uh, colors of the tulips. The hot pink carnation right here, because I want the colors to graduate down in that kind of stair stacking, cascading effect. So this arrangement really looks like, oh, I'm getting ready to pick up this teapot and just, you know, pour out a cup of beautiful flowers. Um, and that's the reason why I'm having all my lines, uh, having the crescents cascading this way out of the spout. Uh, at this point, I think that I'm done with this except for putting in the filler flowers. I think what I'm gonna use for filler flowers is gonna be this great Monocasino. Monocasino, as you see, it comes on single stalks, but you have all these little shoots off the end of it which these are great for uh, wedding work. So I don't want to throw those away. And then I would just want to go 
in between and just put some little uh, sprigs in between. Back here, I'm just taking little pieces and just filling in the little cracks so I don't have any oasis showing. Because that's one of the main things you want to do. You want to make sure you cover up all your mechanics. When you're taking off this excess greenery, the easiest way is just to come down and just pull it off. Now, I'm having like some little holes through here, so I just want to pull my tulips to the side and just place them down. But you want the filler flower to also flow through the arrangement. So, like right here, I need to have like a little bit of the Monte Cassino kind of spouting out through here. So it continues with that um, fill of the flowers are cascading out of the spout. And again, you just want to move flowers up. And even if you can't see your oasis, you can fill it with your stem. And there we go. I'm ready to pour a little cup of flower tea. This arrangement, I don't have any greenery that I'm using because I've made the arrangement so low and I've covered up all my mechanics. That is that arrangement. We're going to finish these two up. Place that right through there so I have that little pink peeking out through there. And I'm really needing some pink in the front, so I'm just going to go and sneak a little piece right in there. So that is my front of my second little teapot. And that's the back of my, and this is the front of this little teacup, which will be placed on the saucer. Like so, putting little pieces like through here, just to get a little sneak of color. And here we have our beautiful tea party bouquet. Until next time, like and subscribe below, share with your friends, and if there's any arrangements or designs that you would like to see, drop me a message down below. And until next time, sparkle on!